What's up friends, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're gonna finally take a look at the Canon R5 and this review has taken me a long time to get to because I wanted to get some serious shooting time in with this camera before I made any of my opinions or statements on this camera. And I got to use it on a bunch of shoots as well as some jobs and some of those jobs I can't even show you because the content's not released yet. But I just wanted to get the most time I could so I could give you guys like a real world experience. And you know, this camera is gonna be a real workhorse for a lot of people so I wanna make sure that I cover it correctly. And uh, also thanks to Camera Canada for loaning this R5 to me and some lenses to shoot this review. So uh, yeah, strap in because it's gonna be a long video. I think the most polarizing thing about this camera is the way that Canon marketed it with like these insane video features, 8K raw video, 120 frames per second, 4K. Um, I feel like they tried to cater to filmmakers and I'm sure a lot of you guys know by now that there's a lot of limitations to shooting in these modes with overheating and you know cool down periods where you can't even use the camera. So it's actually happened to me in some other shoots I did with it. So you need to think wisely about this camera and what you're gonna do most. So if it's higher end video work, I'd say stay away from this camera. I'm not gonna recommend it for that, but I do want this video to be more about the photography focus side of things because I think that's where this camera does shine. And this review will be mostly all the strong points of this camera as a photo camera. And you'll be happy to know that it's like this insane top spec full frame photo camera with pretty much no limitations when it comes to photography. Now the spec list on this camera is crazy. It's a full frame 45 megapixel sensor, dual pixel AF2 with human and animal eye autofocus tracking, in body stabilization, it can do up to six stops of stabilization or more with a stabilized lens. It has 12 frames per second mechanical shutter, 20 frames per second electronic shutter, and that's blackout free, which is amazing. I'll show you guys that later. And it has a really nice EVF, 5.7 million dot EVF, 120 frames per second readout. It has this nice, articulating touch screen. It's got dual card slots. It's got a mic jack, headphone jack, USB type C, micro HDMI, as well as a sync port. And obviously all those crazy video resolutions I kind of talked about with the 8K raw video. But when it comes to the ergonomics, you know, it's probably one of the most comfortable mirrorless cameras I've ever held. Uh, and this is the same for the R6. And you know, in fact, a lot of the things that I say about this camera will actually apply to the R6 other than the fact that it's 20 megapixels and this is 45. So yeah, back to the ergonomics. The grip is thick with two Cs. The buttons all feel great. And you know, the back of this camera kind of feels similar to older Canon DSLRs. It has a top display showing you all your settings and modes that you're in. And I like the shutter button placement and just kind of the overall layout. And I find it weird that Canon ditched the ISO button that they have on most of their DSLR cameras and now they have a dedicated ISO dial which is pretty common on most other cameras and I'm just saying that coming from like a 5D or 6D if you're coming from those cameras you'll notice it's a little bit different. I really like that Canon has allowed you to customize some of these buttons so that you're not kind of stuck with the default setup. And actually when I first got the camera, the joystick didn't work for selecting autofocus points. Um, so I actually had to go into the menu, it's the orange section, the third row over, then go to customize buttons and down to the multi-controller and turn that on. I don't know if this is the same for everyone or just me, but I thought I'd mention that. And you know, this is my first real experience with an RF camera and RF lenses. so the control ring on the front of the lenses are actually programmable as well. This is the 35 right here and it has a ring on the front you can program. And so you could set it up for something like ISO or aperture. And uh, yeah, speaking of these lenses, you can also set up the focused ring to be linear, which is really nice. On most of these focus by wire lenses, um, they're not linear and you can actually jump past your focus point or back past it. Um, with linear, it kind of keeps it the same speed no matter where you are. Now, getting into autofocus, Canon's done an amazing job on this new system. It's super responsive, it has tons of options, and it's nearly as good as Sony's autofocus system, and that's actually a huge compliment. Um, I don't want to go over all the options because there's so many, but there are eight different focus modes, and to access them, you hit the AF point button on the back here, and then you can either touch on the menus to scroll through them, or the M function button on the front here to cycle through them. There's wide tracking, spot, one point, 
expanded area, large expanded area, zone, large vertical zone, and large horizontal zone. And typically I just leave the camera in spot and use the joystick to select where I want to focus. And this is great when you're doing portrait photography and you don't have like an IAF option. And in this camera, I actually have it set up to toggle the IAF on and off from the AF on button. And that's similar to how I have it set up on my Sony. In the menus, I have a lot of different options to tweak the servo autofocus tracking. And I just left the camera in case one, which is like a multi-purpose mode, pretty much covers everything. And this camera is pretty crazy when it comes to tracking for the most part. I don't see why it wouldn't crush things like sports, action, wildlife. Um, you know, the camera does shoot 12 frames per second mechanical as well as 20 frames per second electronic. And that's without cropping on the sensor. So you get that full frame 45 megapixel image. So as I've mentioned, this camera does do 12 frames per second mechanical, but it'll do 20 frames per second when you switch it to electronic shutter. And I'm just gonna run towards the camera. I'm gonna set this to face tracking only, and you're gonna see how fast this is without any blackout. It just looks like I'm recording a video, and you can see the counter at the top there showing how many frames I have left. And you have around 99 frames when you're just doing raw. And this I show which frames are in and out of focus, and it does a really good job when I'm running towards the camera kind of erratically. Now in this test I wanted to see how far it would actually track my eye with eye detection and I was about 40 feet away from the camera it was actually able to track my eye no problem and we weren't shooting any photos here he was just locked onto my eye and we did touch to focus there and it's actually tracking my head as well as you can see it does a really good job at tracking the eye. Now this is a real world IAF tracking with 12 frames per second mechanical shutter. I'm taking shots here and you can see it's locked into the eye. And this is great for fashion photography if you have a model walking towards you because it does a really good job of tracking. And you can see when I ran out of frames here, it started jumping down to one frame to two frames until I couldn't actually shoot at all. And that was me using a really fast V90 UHS-2 SD card. When it comes to dynamic range, Canon has kind of lagged behind everyone else in this area, but with this new sensor in the R5, it's actually really good and comparable to what I've seen from like Sony a7R4, and I'll show you some images. Obviously, this is not a scientific dynamic range test by any means, but this is a real world situation where I underexpose the model to preserve the highlights in the sky up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull those shadows back out and lower the highlights. And I'm gonna show you how well this sensor can actually resolve this detail while being pushed this much. So I'm gonna go up here and bump the exposure up a little bit, drop my highlights back and lift those shadows. And typically when you lift shadows this much on most Canon cameras, at least my 5D Mark IV, you'd start to see a lot of green color casts coming into the darks here. And on this, I'm not seeing any weird color shifts. The colors are staying pretty much exactly how they'd be. So I'm gonna bump the exposure a little bit. I'm gonna warm it up. And I can even pull those highlights down even more and you can see all those cloud details are still there. And I feel like this looks a little too HDR. So I'm gonna drop the shadows back a bit and uh, leave it around there. I actually really like how this looks because this is a moody shot. We don't want to lift those shadows up too much. And as you can see, there's no weird color stuff going on in the shadows. Um, all the detail on the face is there and everything. And there's nothing weird going on and this image looks great. So here's another image that I shot where I completely underexposed that it. it's probably around two stops underexposed. ISO 800 and it was kind of getting dark out. This is around blue hour or a little after blue hour. But I'm gonna bump this up to about two stops and you can see that all that color details there, there's nothing weird going on, but you will see that there's a bit of noise because I am lifting it so much, but it looks great. I actually don't even have to really do anything to this thing. Um, we can lift the shadows just a little bit if we wanted to, but as you can see, there's no weird color stuff going on when you lift those shadows. And I could bump the exposure a little more. And the cool thing is you can warm this up. You can make it look like sunset, cool it down. And uh, there's nothing weird going on with the colors and the colors look great. Basically, this is just the raw file with nothing else going on. When it comes to high ISO, I decided to go out and shoot in this really nice night. And I cycled through from 1600 ISO all the way up to 51,200. And I wouldn't call this a low light king of camera, but it does do a really nice job. And the nice thing is there isn't any weird color shifting when you go up in the higher ISO. So this is 1600, it looks nice and clean, nice and sharp. 
3200 ISO, um, you start to see a little bit of noise, and then obviously at 6400, a little bit of noise, and that continues all the way up. But the noise is nice and filmic. It's got a nice film grain look to it, and I think that's because the pixels are nice and tight because of 45 megapixels. As you can see at 6400 ISO, there's tons of detail, um, but there's a little bit of noise. There's just no weird color shift going on, and obviously 12,800, 25,600 is probably the peak I would go and then up to 51,200 it's really noisy but there is still quite a bit of detail it's just that there's so much noise you can actually see the noise levels here um, everything's just kind of mushy and gross looking on the 51,200 but on 3200 ISO there's still lots of nice detail here especially in the water and in this rock here you see lots of detail and the noise and just mush is kind of overtaking the image on the 51,200 I'm going to make these available for download, so I'll put a link in the description where you guys can download these and take a look at them for yourself. So as I mentioned, this camera has really good IBIS. It's got six stops of stabilization or more with a stabilized lens. And I took it out to do some photography with it because I know that there's some of you guys out there that like to shoot handheld without a tripod. And I had no issue getting 1 15th of a second sharp as long as I was looking through the EVF using my head as a third point of contact. And you know, that was also with this 35 millimeter f1.8 because it's stabilized. So as you can see, it does a great job. The shutter is actually pretty quiet and really dampened. So there's no real shutter shock. And that also became a problem when I was shooting with some of the models because they couldn't hear the shutter clicking and they like to switch up their pose when they hear the shutter clicking. And I had to make a sound effect sometimes so that they knew that it was happening. So I didn't really want to get into video on this camera, but I have been using it as my BTS camera for the last month, shooting all the behind the scenes with this camera. But I did shoot a little bit of 8K video for you guys because I thought some of you might be curious of what it looks like. Um, I also wanted to test out this little mini slider too that I was sent from Smarter because why not? It's a pretty cool little slider and you can pretty much put it in any backpack and it handled the R5 no problems and I didn't even put it on a tripod. And you can basically change all your settings with the slider in the app so you can do easing and smoothing and change the speed as well as do things like time lapse. Um, and I was going to try to do time lapse with this camera because this camera does have a built in intervalometer. I uh, just didn't really have enough time to do that. but. I'll put some of these 8K clips in the description. You can download them and check them out for yourself. They're just the lower IPB 8K files, so they're not like the huge RAW files. And also put links down to the slider in the description if you want to know more about that as well. Okay, so my final thoughts. I'm going to break this into things I like and things I don't like. First, I'll start with the things I do like. Basically, this is kind of like a do-it-all camera. It's got fast frame rates. It's got a deep buffer. It's got fast continuous autofocus tracking. Um, and which basically means it can handle any situation from like portraits to sports in action. And I didn't even mention that this camera can also do APS-C mode so you can crop in on the sensor to 1.6 times. And I'll give you a 17 megapixel RAW file. So if you know you're in a situation where you need to punch in, which would be good for wildlife, you could do that. It's pretty similar to something like the Sony a7R4. The EVF is amazing. It's big, it's sharp, it's got a fast readout. Um, you know, it's got a flip screen. Touching the menus is really nice, it's responsive. The menus are easy to navigate. And as I mentioned, the ergonomics are nice. It feels nice to the hands, the buttons have a nice layout. Similar kind of to older Canons, except for the top. The top dial is a little bit different. Um, I also love when you take the lens off or the body cap, there's a shutter that covers the sensor. And I think that all cameras should have this because it actually covers the sensor from getting dust and stuff like that in it. And speaking of dust, this camera does have good weather sealing. This seems like there's seals on everything. I don't see any issues of why this wouldn't hold up in the rain or something like that. It's pretty solid. It does use the new LPE6 and H battery, which is just kind of a variation of the old LPE6 battery. Um, you can use the older Canon batteries. I just think that the newer one has a higher capacity, which will allow the camera to run longer. The IBIS system seems really well thought out considering it's like the first version of IBIS in a Canon camera. It seems to work really well for handheld photos and it's amazing for video, especially when you pair it with like digital stabilization as well. When it comes to the image, the dynamic range, the color size, I know a lot of people hype up Canon's color science and I'll admit it does look good. I haven't shot with a Canon camera in a long time so it does look nice on the back of the screen as well as the JPEGs but pretty much most cameras that are coming out now actually also look amazing and if you're shooting raw then it's going to look any way you want it to. But I do think that you know this is a generation ahead of where Canon used to be as far as dynamic range. Um, it's been the furthest leap and you can push these files around and they're not going to break super easy. They have tons of detail, 45 megapixels. And if you're wondering how big an uncompressed raw file is, it's around 43 megabytes. Okay, so the things I don't like, and these are 
just mostly nitpicky things. Um, I wish the joystick was a little bit lower. I feel like the joystick is up too high and it could just be that I have short thumbs, but on most cameras, it's a little bit lower. It's around where the info button is and I keep hitting the info button by accident when I go to reach for the joystick. It's also dual card slot cameras I mentioned before, but they're not the same cards for both. So you have to buy UHS two cards as well as CF Express if you wanna to write to both cards. And you know, when it comes to video, you actually need those CF cards to actually unlock the higher end video features on this camera. It would have been nice if they were both the same type of card so you didn't have to use two different ones. But I guess that's kind of similar to like 5D cameras when you had an SD card as well as like a compact flash card. Now when it comes to the eye autofocus, the eye autofocus box animation leaves you feeling confident like it's in focus because the animation is so smooth and locks onto the eye, really similar to Sony. Um, it's a huge upgrade from the EOS R when I used it last. I found that a lot laggier. But here's the problem is that I found a lot of my images were slightly out of focus and this was across all the lenses I used. So I kind of learned to take like two of every shot just in case one was slightly out of focus. And that was something I learned early on in the first shoot I did with this because I just thought I was trusting it and I was like, oh yeah, the eye autofocus is amazing. But when you look at the images, they're just, some of them are just slightly out of focus and it's kind of annoying because you know that it's probably just so close to being in focus and I don't know if the servo jumped before I took the shot, but it seemed to happen in a lot of shots that I took. I made sure that all the lenses and the body firmware were up to date. So I'm just kind of letting you know that that was my experience. Maybe others haven't had the issue. Maybe it's this camera, I'm not sure, but it definitely was an issue for me. I also found that it didn't matter what lenses I used, the camera had a hard time autofocusing in backlight situations. And I found myself having to resort to actually manually focusing the camera. I had this one shoot where someone's coming in from the side and it just wouldn't focus. So I had to use manual focus. Again, I don't know if that's a firmware update thing that'll help fix that. That's basically it, those are my gripes. It kinda just comes down to the autofocus system. I don't know if they're firmware things or not, but uh, I did find some issues there. Um, I did really wanna like this camera cause on paper it's crazy insane and obviously it is expensive. It's about $4,000 US or $5,400 Canadian. And if you only wanted this as a photo camera and you didn't care about the 8K video and all those other things, you still have to pay that premium for those features that you'll never use. Um, all that said, I still think this is the most all around professional photo camera you can get right now, especially when it comes to mirrorless. Again, I wanna give a huge shout out to Camera Canada for being the only place to send me an EOS R5 loaner to review for you guys. Um, I tried lots of places and they were the only ones. Um, if you're looking for camera gear and you live in Canada, make sure to check them out. Um, I just bought a lens from them and they shipped it in like two days. So fast shipping, nice guys. Make sure to check them out. I'll put links in the description where to find them. But that's it for this video. I just talked a lot. <laughs> if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. 3.30 AM, time to go to bed. Range the blah 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 the blue be blah blah hundred dollars Canadian so I wanted to try over that night for do some for to do okay hundred and twenty frames per second things we're gonna get through this and cool dine cool dine what's a cool dine three time three times a charm right oh, yet or not even released from the person that I sh shot it from.